Hey guys, Ash here. If you can't hear me, just in case, turn audio on. Been having some issues with the audio today on Facebook Live, so I really hope that this works. Because um, today I want to talk to you about motivation. And I feel like it's... Let's see here. I feel like it's going to work. So, hey, somebody just came on. Please tell me if you can hear the audio. Can you hear me? Can April, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Just give it like a tap. Can, we can hear you. Yay! You can hear me. Okay, excellent. So I'm so happy it's working. Make sure that those of you sure can, Ashley Sharonis. Thank you so much. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about motivation. And uh, I find this really fitting for me today because I actually choose what I'm going to be talking about um, a couple weeks out in advance. And this last week has been very challenging for me. So it's kind of funny that I'm talking about motivation, but it also really helped me kind of like dig deep and like how am I going to um, tell you guys how to stay motivated when I'm learning during one of my tough weeks too. So this last week I've been like super emotional, super stressed, um, just I feel like I never stop. I have a lot of stuff going on with my mom, like we just found out recently that her immunotherapy isn't working like they hope to. So like life has just been nuts and because of it I've been like super snappy like I almost didn't even do this Facebook live because my audio wasn't working and it really pissed me off so um, how have I stayed motivated the last week because this has been a challenging week and these are the kind of weeks where um, you guys as well would not feel like working out not feel like eating healthy throwing your hands up the air and not caring so there's a couple ways that I stay motivated. Um, mentally, it's a mental game for me first. So mentally, I have to stay motivated by uh, listening to podcasts, um, like things that are motivating, make you happy, all about the mindset. I'll put on a YouTube video of Tony Robbins. I know some of you guys tease me about Tony Robbins, but I love the guy. And he really kind of puts me back in that positive mindset that like I can get shit done no matter what. Um, so I do stuff like that and then sometimes I just I'll like take a moment and I'll read a book I can't say I've done that this week about motivation But sometimes that's also what I tap into and then Matt and I have also been meditating I can't always say it's the most effective meditation because my mind has been so busy and stressed that I Like sometimes I can't even meditate properly, but that also means that I need it more so those are kind of the ways I first get into the mindset to be motivated. So if I know that something is really stressing me out a lot and I'm losing focus and I'm losing motivation, I have to like listen to a podcast, I have to watch my good old Tony Robbins on YouTube or I need to like meditate or do, um, and even just for five minutes, um, or I need to like pick up one of my old motivation books. So that's kind of how I get into the mindset. So I've really been digging deep this week to stay focused on those kind of things. And, um, but when it comes to working out, rewind 10 years, what motivated me was vanity. So um, that's what would motivate me. It literally got me up and out of the house sometimes by 5, 5.30 in the morning. And this is at a time when I actually partied and I would be out drinking and stuff, and I, but I would get up early, I would do it before I went to work at GM, and I would go to the gym, but it was vanity, and that's what motivated me. I wanted to be super thin, I wanted to have a six pack, I wanted to have like ripped arms, and it's funny because at that time when I was super, um, motivated by vanity, it's actually when I started to put weight on because I was over exercising and under eating. And you guys, you guys have probably heard that story if you've been, uh, you know, with me for a while. But anyways, that's, that used to be what motivated me. And I, I kind of wanted to go back and talk about that today because I know that there's some people that are still motivated by that. And I'm not saying it's not rewarding, but if that's your main motivation, you're probably not going to stick with working out and eating healthy. Um, because y your weight's always going to go up and down and sometimes you're going to feel like super energized to work out and sometimes you're not and sometimes you're going to want to eat a healthy or sorry an unhealthy meal and not feel guilty about it. So that's kind of where my motivation was before and for those of you that are sometimes still there, I want you to kind of step back from that and then hopefully gain some insight to what I'm going to talk about as my motivation next because um, that is where you get the longevity from because when I used that as my motivation before, it, uh, it never stuck. 
because you get really discouraged really quickly if you feel like you're going out of your calorie amount or you see the scale going up and down or you don't think your measurements are changing fast enough or whatever you you know you're something happens in your life where you you know you eat unhealthy for like two weeks and you're like oh my god I can't do this so like motivation really wavers a lot if your motivation, um, or sorry, success really wavers if your motivation is driven by vanity. So my my vanity kind of was my motivation for so long and then when I had all these health concerns in my mid-20s, that's when it kind of switched over to um, you know, making sure that I was feeling good, making sure that I was going to the bathroom regularly, making sure that my fiber was in check, making sure that I was eating healthy for energy because I was exhausted because of, I was not eating enough calories. And that's when things really started to change. And those is what have continued to be my motivation to stick with my eating healthy and to stick with my, um, my workout regime that isn't as intense as it was before, but my results are way better. And now my motivation strictly comes from, say, this last week that I just explained about me being a basket case. I will wake up no matter how busy I am and no matter how much I don't want to work or the idea of going live or like doing a workout video literally makes me want to pull my hair out. I tell myself I need to do it because I know I'm going to feel better after. So I could be in a really crappy mood, but I am always better after a workout. So there's a really good motivator. You, I just notice my moods are way more consistent and I just feel better about myself and I feel like I can take on more crap if I work out. And even if it's like 10 or 15 minutes, it's crazy how much you can do for your brain. Um, I was saying in one of my Facebook lives this week that I've actually been getting like anxiety and that is so unusual for me and it gives me a great appreciation for those of you that suffer from it a lot. And like, I don't know what I would do without my workouts that day. And it is incredible how that can motivate you. Like if you're, if your heart rate's like this and like you feel like you're going to be sick because you have um, like that nausea feeling from like just like your heart going so fast, it's incredible how much a workout can do. That motivates you. And that is a really healthy motivation because it helps your brain and it helps your body. And then um, on top of that, my major motivations are just simply energy, like just keeping up with like how busy it is to be a mom and run a business and try to have energy for when my husband gets home, which he's been getting home late a lot, is a, a like, I need to work out or I'm gonna be tired. It's almost like when you're like, go, go, go all day long and then all of a sudden you sit on the couch and you totally wipe out. It's like you need, you need that energy to keep going. Like you need that exercise to keep going. So energy is another one. So mood energy and then just overall um, health like I just feel so much healthier when it, uh, now and that motivates me to eat healthy so before when I would try to you know not eat that many calories because I wanted to be thin I wouldn't eat the healthiest stuff because I would eat all the low fat low calorie just shit and then now I eat for my vitality and I eat for my digestion and I eat for my hormones and I do everything that's right now for me and that motivates me because it's unbelievable how much more um, focused and how much more peace of mind and how much more like digestively like just everything goes better you don't get those ups and downs with your uh, sugar you don't get the ups and downs with like even just like cravings and everything so that motivates me like when I go somewhere and I have like a, you know two choices and I have like a healthy choice and a bad choice I will strictly not eat that bad choice now because I don't want to be bloated and constipated and then craving it more where before I would be motivated to not um, have the bad stuff because I was afraid of calories and that's a very different motivation up here and how does that how does that affect you and then all of a sudden it's like a downward spiral so if it's not a good motivator up here and then you do end up having that bad thing then you get really hard on yourself and it kind of a downward spiral and the next thing you know it's like 10 days later and you've been eating like crap the whole time so um, yeah that's what motivates me so just to kind of reiterate Oh, look at all these, look at all these uh, likes on here. People are loving it right now. Thank you so much. Um, I would, I just want to reiterate. So I would say um, to get in the mindset to be motivated for me, 
I have to really dig deep up here. So lots of people think that all these things just come naturally for me and I wake up like positive, basically like skipping through my day and that doesn't always happen. And if there's any example of that, that's been this last week. Um, but no, I don't, but how do I get over that? Like I know it's, I, I'll have my moment and then, but I know ultimately it's a choice. So how do I get over that? I listen to my, my podcast the you know, uh, the one that's really good to make you feel good, um, for me right now is earn your happy. I really like that one with Lori Harder just to give some suggestions. I like that one. Tony Robbins also has one, but I usually watch his YouTube videos and then, um, any of like Tony Robbins books or Robin Sharma, he's awesome as well, which you can find on YouTube and then the meditation. So that's how I get in the mindset. And then the motivation starts to come from that. So like, I know that I want to feel good. I want to feel energized. I want to be present. I want to be focused. And I just, I don't want to be going through my day with like all these highs and lows of energy and digestive upset. And so it's really that simple for me, but, but those simplicities that are so much more than vanity is what has been able to, for me to maintain my body and my lifestyle. And yeah, so it's really that simple. So for any of you that are watching and still count calories and still obsess over how much you can work out and it's, you know, you obsess over like, I don't know, like your cellulite or you can't lose this extra, you know, weight in your belly. Like when you stop focusing on that and you focus on all the other things, you'll find that these things start to follow. So all of a sudden either the cellulite will start to go away because you're eating healthier or all of a sudden you won't care or you'll start to lose weight around your stomach because you're not stressed all the time and you'll be making food choices um, that are better for you and that make you feel good so you're not restricting yourself and slowing your metabolism which means that you're not going to be hanging on to the extra weight so um, for those of you that are watching i hope this helped a little bit let me see if there's any comments this is exactly what we we're talking about today a long healthy life free of disease and pain is a motivator Ooh, that's a good one too kelly thanks for a reminder another thing that motivates me to um, eat healthy and exercise is like one of my biggest fears i would say other than death is getting Alzheimer's and like like I know that what I'm putting in my body is gonna predict how am I I'm gonna like live later and like how healthy I'm gonna be and how vital I'm gonna be so yes Kelly you're exactly right like it's it's even nitty-gritty and I don't know if that just comes with age or or whatever but that also motivates me because I want to take good care of myself and like not to be a Debbie down or anything but I've had um, three family members in the last four years um, get diagnosed and die of cancer and I don't want that so that motivates me uh, I hear you on the energy and mood so true it I know and nice meeting you again today Tara it is it's profound like I am so grateful for exercise because anybody that has any sort of anxiety depression or anything like I exercise to be in a good mood in general but after feeling the way I have this last week, like I don't know how people don't have that in their regime if that is how they feel mentally because who cares about the way it makes you feel and look physically if, if it changes that much mentally, like it's mind blowing. Um, I think that is a great point, the slippery slope. I run into that if I don't have groceries in the house, the next thing you know, it's a month and eating out. Yeah, I can't see the rest of it, but um, yeah, it is funny how it can be a slippery slope, especially when you're focusing on you know, trying to eat within a certain amount of calories per day because then all of a sudden you don't eat there or you're like, I can never have this one food, it's evil. And then you eat it and then you feel guilty and then it just, it's up here and it just totally plays on your brain and then next thing you know, like like you're saying, it's a month later or it's a week later. Like I know for me when I used to do that, it would be, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna wait for the weekend and I'm gonna have my cheat meal. So I would like eat way too clean during the week, like so clean it was ridiculous and uh, way too little calories and then Friday would hit and I have this cheat meal that literally turned into like a three to five day cheat to the point where I would eat so much um, it would make me sick not like sick like puke but like sick like my stomach would be so sore I have to undo the buttons on my pants like it was not healthy that's not a healthy way to eat um, let me just turn this light down so I don't look like a big ghost to you guys um, earn your happy is also my fave. Your mental discipline is exemplary. 
um, you know, enough to do the right things when you need to do them to keep yourself focused and on track. That's what I believe that's going to say what, that's what motivation is. I, you know what? Thanks, April. Um, you always know the right things to say, but yeah, it, uh, my mental um, stamina, I guess, even though you can be in a bad mood, it's I know what I need to do. And, and sometimes that's even like the quick workout or um, saying like, hey, I need a minute. <laughs> Maybe we should talk for a second. Like you just need to know, you need to know like your mental capacity and like what you need to get into that better spot again. Because nobody can be positive all the time and motivated all the time. Like that is nearly impossible. And anybody that tells you they are, they're full of shit. Um, I appreciate how simple you make it sound really is a change of mindset yeah and you know what Jamie that is what's gonna make it last because and that's like the biggest work that I do with my clients especially I try to do one-on-one -on -one. and then we also try to do um, in our group and in our classes is that like if you like when people come up and ask me like how many calories I burn during this class like it literally is like nails down a chalkboard for me because that's not what it's about and if that's what it's about for you, it's not gonna last. And it's the same thing with like, how many calories were in this meal? Like if that's all of your concern, then it's never gonna last for you. It has to be so much different than that. It can't be about, you know, how much weight can I lose and how, you know, how much flatter can I have my, my stomach or how much smaller can I make my ass? Like it has to be so much, um, I wanna say deeper, but also more simple, if that makes sense. It sounds too easy when you say it, but I find the willpower and staying motivated so hard. It is hard. I'm not trying to make it sound easy, Sabrina. Um, I'm not trying to make it sound easy. I will say for me, I actually enjoy working out. So that part would be easier for me. So once I get into that mental game, like once I reset my mindset, uh, it's kind of a tongue twister, but once I reset that, it will probably be easier for me than you to get working out because I really enjoy working out. But... I'm not trying to make it sound easy, but it's doable, but it starts up here and then the other stuff will follow. And like, you're a busy mom of twins. Like it is like, even if you have, like, even if it just means setting more realistic expectations of yourself. So, you know, maybe you can only do a five minute workout one day or a 10 minute workout. Like you just have to make sure that it's, um, it's attainable for you. So it's not discouraging and you still have the willpower. I hope that helps. You are such a wonderful role model, Ash. Love you. Thanks, Ashley. You know I love you too. Um, so thanks for coming on, guys. That was, um, I'm happy I did it because I had that moment when I was getting notes that the audio wasn't working where I was like, screw it. <laughs> I'm not doing it because that's how easy it's been to like flip me off this week. So I'm happy I did and I'm happy you guys stayed engaged. And uh, yeah, so let me just make sure I didn't miss any comments. No, I don't think so, but I hope you guys have a, um, thanks, you always have great advice. You're most welcome, Sabrina. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Oh, you know what? I made my tea. I didn't even drink any. I made a tea to have with you guys. And uh, if any of my moms are watching that was out today at Stroller Fit, like, wow, you guys kick ass. I, I, it's my goal to try and get to know you all, but I don't know if it's even possible with that many people. But um, thank you so much for coming. And thank you, everyone on here as well, for, for taking the time to hear me chit-chat and, and, uh, and, I don't know, just hang out with you on a Wednesday evening. So cheers, little sip. Mm -hmm. P.S. I love your play area for Rowan. Oh, yeah, my little play area. She's at that stage right now, Sabrina, which I'm sure your girls are just in and around too, where she wants to imitate everything I do, which I love, but it's also a nice reminder to always be watching what you do because they're going to imitate it. But this little kitchen is nice because if I'm in the kitchen, which is right here, she will be in her little kitchen. So it's really nice, but thank you. And uh, yes, have a good night, guys. And let me know, as always, I'll come on here for the next 24 hours. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I will check in with you guys. Okay, take care. Make today badass, or make tonight badass. Okay, bye.